Hello, this is the weekly weather briefing from the National Weather Service, Peachtree City, Georgia, for Thursday, March 9th, 2017. Here are the highlights uh, that we want to focus on uh, beginning uh, late tonight, tomorrow, uh, through early next week. We are expecting a, a cold front to move across the area late tonight into Friday morning, uh, which will generate some showers and possibly a few storms, uh, especially north of 20, very late tonight. Uh, into tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll be watching for a very isolated uh, chance for a strong storm with this frontal passage. As we head into this weekend, uh, we are looking at another system uh, approaching the area and colder air coming in uh, from the north. Um, that storm system that's going to impact uh, north and central Georgia late Saturday night into Sunday will generally bring a cold rain to much of the area as the low pressure tracks uh, south of uh, across South Alabama, South Georgia. And we are going to be looking at uh, the potential for a brief uh, wintry mix or a changeover from a cold rain to freezing rain, sleet, and or snow early Sunday morning, mainly along and north of a Rome to Dawsonville to Cornelia line across North Georgia. So um, we're not looking at any major impacts with this system, but we could see a brief period of some wintry precipitation late Saturday night into early Sunday morning across North Georgia. And then we're looking at a reinforcing shot of colder air late Monday night into Tuesday with another chance of some snow showers or snow flurries across the North Mountains of Georgia. Here's a, a image of the uh, cold front and showers with a few storms that are going to develop out ahead of the front late tonight into Friday morning. Um, generally after midnight, between about 2 and 6 a.m., we expect showers and a few storms to develop um, across north Alabama and north Georgia. Uh, a few of these storms uh, could be strong. Uh, we're looking at primary threats, gusty winds, 40 to 45 miles per hour, and maybe some small hail all the way up to one inch possibly um, as the as the storms move through. But generally speaking, it's going to be more of just a brief rain event um, late tonight into early tomorrow morning. And as the showers and storms push south and east away from the cold front, um, we expect the coverage to diminish a little bit, um, and the severe threat shouldn't be really that big of a deal. We're probably going to be looking at showers and any thunderstorms that do develop south of I-20 uh, during the morning hours on Friday, we could see um, a few uh, bursts of, of winds up to 40 miles per hour. Uh, again, maybe some small hail, but mainly just locally heavy rain and maybe some occasional cloud to ground lightning. So as Dave mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, winter is not completely finished with us yet. And as we can see, um, for those of you familiar with the long wave pattern, the trough ridge pattern, about 10, 15,000 feet, above the ground we have a strong trough building into the area from Canada and building down into the area and what that's going to do is it's going to displace the jet stream to the south and that's going to result in colder than normal temperatures and it's going to remain in the area for several days. It's an uncommon pattern to have during March but this is something we would normally see in January or February so um, also ahead of this we'll see some moisture and, that'll, and that's going to be associated with some of the cold fronts that's going to move in the area in the next couple of days. First, we'll take a look at the pattern as it takes shape across late Saturday night and Sunday morning. And you'll notice it's a very active pattern. We have a low-pressure system that's going to move across central Alabama into central Georgia. And associated with that to the south, you'll see some possible rain and thunderstorms. And as you move to the north, you'll see uh, cold rain, and then you'll notice a white line to the north. And due to colder air, denoted by the blue arrows, uh, with passing into the area, uh, behind that line we could see a mix of sleet to freezing rain as it begins to transition as temperatures drop below freezing. And finally, you could see some snow in that area, particularly in the mountainous regions of the northeast. And that should be out of the area by Sunday morning. Here are the low temperatures over Saturday night and Sunday morning. And as you can see on the plot to the left, most areas are expected to remain above freezing. 
So you may see some icy patches in the northeastern part of the state on the roads, especially over bridges and overpasses. On Sunday, the clouds and the cool air mass will result in very little warming. However, at this time of the year, the direct sunlight from a higher sun angle compared to January and February will help to minimize the road impacts. Now we're going to take a look ahead to a snow threat area on Monday night and Tuesday. And in the plot to the left, there's a shaded area in the northern part of the state where we have 20 to 30 percent chance of snow flurries. And this will carry over to Monday night and into Tuesday. And we'll also see colder temperatures than the system we had this weekend. And I'll talk about that in an ensuing slide. However, remember that we're still four to five days out and we could still see some modification in the forecast. In regard to those low temperatures, here are a couple of maps of the low temperatures on Monday night and Tuesday night throughout our region. And what we've done is we've shown all of the temperatures above freezing to be in red and all of those below to be in blue. So on Monday night, almost the entire state, with the exception of the northeast corner, are going to be above freezing, um, although this could be modified due to cloud cover and the character of the precipitation. And on Tuesday, a lot of the central and northern part of the region appears to be below freezing. However, most of the precipitation will have moved out of the area by Tuesday night. However, the main hazard there is if there's any accumulation or moisture on the road, this could cause refreezing and cause iced roadways, especially causing hazards over bridges and overpasses. And now here's a look at our high temperatures on Tuesday afternoon. The map on the left hand side of the screen shows temperatures mainly in the 50s throughout the region and also in the 40s to the north. Upper 30s and mid 40s are also possible in the highest elevations of the mountains. And temperatures, keep in mind, could be lower, especially in areas where snow showers mix in that cold air from aloft in this deep cold air mass. The impacts are generally minimal as far as iced roads and snow are concerned, except where areas where the low temperatures we saw on the last slide are lower than 32. So a lot of the main impacts will be in the northern mountains. Of course, keep in mind that this is several days out and we're due for modifications in the forecast. So updates will be forthcoming in the next few days. To summarize today's briefing, our immediate concern is of showers and a few storms late tonight and into Friday morning that's associated with the passing cold front. We do have the threat of some strong to severe storms north of I-20. However, we don't have any major risk. The threat is marginal for now. A much colder pattern will set up Saturday and Sunday and remain through midweek as a trough digs down from Canada, pushing the jet stream to the south and reinforcing cold air throughout the region, giving us a very wintry pattern for several days. A storm system late Saturday night and Sunday will bring cold rain through most of the area. And with the exception of an increasing chance of wintry mix as we go to the northern part of the state, um, north of Rome to Dawsonville to Cornelia in that area. And there's also a chance of a little bit of snow in that area as it transitions below freezing. Finally, there's a reinforcing shot of cold air Tuesday and Wednesday that also has a chance of snow showers and flurries across the northern mountains. However, that's several days out and we'll continue to modify the forecast and continue to give updates. Here is our contact information if you want to reach us or get more information from us. Thank you all very much for your attention and we hope you have a great week.